हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर मोहम्मद आदिल असफान आई एम ए कंसल्टेंट सर्जिकल गैस एंट्रोलॉजिस्ट एडवांस लैप्रोस्कोपिक एंड हैपैटोपैनकेटिक बिलरी सर्जन एट मैत्री हॉस्पिटल्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट पेशेंट ऑफ ए कलेसिया कार्डिया व्हिच वी हैव डेल्ट विथ हियर एट मैत्री हॉस्पिटल शी वाज अ 50 ईयर ओल्ड लेडी हु प्रेजेंटेड टू अस विद कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ प्रोग्रेसिव डिस्फेजिया ओवर द पास्ट 2 इयर्स she initially complained of mild dysphagia that is whenever she had to take soft diet uh, she was having mild obstructive symptoms however with progression of time with each swallow she was feeling a sensation of obstruction for which she had to take a gulp of water to relieve that obstruction so this has been persisting over a period of 2 years and it has gradually progressed uh, with this Uh, with the present history she underwent a uh, upper gi endoscopy now the upper gi endoscopy showed a dilated esophagus uh, with uh, a lot of food residue and a mild obstruction at the g junction level a suspicion of achalasia cardia was made for which we made, did a barium swallow a barium swallow showed a hugely distended esophagus with air fluid levels and a bird beak appearance which is typical of achalasia cardia Uh, to further uh, corroborate our findings we had done a uh, upper esophageal manometry esophageal manometry which showed that uh, there was a increased mean resting pressure of the g junction that is the lower esophageal sphincter and there was a failure to of the esophageal sphincter to relax on deglutition at the same time the peristaltic movements in the esophagus were found to be normal now these were suggestive of achalasia cardia type 2 Now, what is achalasia cardia? So, achalasia cardia in technical terms means failure to relax. So, to understand that achalasia cardia, we just need to have in mind the normal deglutition mechanism. So, whenever a patient, whenever a normal person swallows food, uh, the upper oropharyngeal muscles contract, followed by contraction of the esophageal muscles. So, the progressive contraction of the esophageal muscles propels the food from the mouth towards the stomach in, in between the esophagus and the stomach you have the g junction so the g junction normally is in a state of contraction that is the lower esophageal sphincter is in a constant state of contraction however whenever there is a signal uh, received from the proximal esophagus that uh, the food is coming down it starts to relax in cases of achalasia cardia the myotic plexus of neurons that is the orbex plexus they are damaged which results in inappropriate relaxation or absent relaxation on deglutition as as a result these patients tend to have functional esophageal outlet obstruction so with each deglutition the food tends to get uh, stasis in the lower esophagus over a gradual period of time a lot of food gets uh, accumulated within the esophagus resulting in symptoms of achalasia cardia so as discussed in the lady she already had uh, achalasia cardia for a period of past 2 years uh, with progressive dysphagia a majority of patients with achalasia cardia will usually present with dysphagia progressive progressively increasing over a period of time needing uh, a majority of them need water for the dysphagia to relieve on itself Uh, with the progression of time when the esophagus distends there might be a stasis esophagitis which results in chest pain repeated episodes of reflux repeated episodes of cough after taking food and occasionally these patients might even present with pneumonias so all such patients as uh, have been evaluated in our patient undergo an upper gi endoscopy and followed by a barium swallow and uh, a manometry to confirm the presence of achalasia cardia So what do we do in patients with achalasia cardia? So once we have proved that it is achalasia cardia, we uh, we give the patients the options of the managements. Usually temporary options of management include medical management with calcium channel blockers and nitroglycerin and occasional endoscopic dilatation. Our endoscopic dilatations are associated with risk of perforation up to 5%. And uh, these sessions of dilatations might be more than once. So any options for a single time solution yes we do have options 
we have a per oral endoscopic myotomy that is an endoscopic procedure wherein we divide the muscles from uh, through an endoscopic procedure the second th thing is a surgical option a surgical option is a laparoscopic on an open heller's myotomy with a with or without a fundo plication so in our patient we have done a laparoscopic heller's myotomy with a partial fundo plication post operatively the patient was uh, have a patient had an uneventful course post op day 1 she was on a liquid diet post op day 2 soft diet and she was discharged on day 3 on the first follow up she was doing fine and uh, she was able to swallow normal food without any requirement of any water so the difference between a poem procedure versus a surgical procedure is that uh, in poem procedure there are chances of reflux esophagitis because the uh, muscles of the lower esophageal sphincter are divided but there is no anti reflux mechanism that is available endoscopically presently whereas the added advantage of surgery is that apart from the division of the lower esophageal sphincter muscle fibers which uh, helps in relaxation we also add a partial fundo plication to prevent any reflux esophagitis so for any patient who comes with symptoms of reflux long standing reflux with uh, new onset of dysphagia it is imperative that we further investigate the patient to rule out any functional any or any organic causes of obstruction of the esophagus thank you